true and deep and loving, let's prepare our hearts for God's word. It's, it's always an honor um, to think about what if Jesus did not save you? Where would your life have been? More specifically, if Jesus had saved none of us, who would be in our lives? And who has God brought into your life? Honestly, if Jesus saved none of us, we would not be here today. If Jesus didn't save any of us, um, we would not have made this grand trip to Juno. None of us, you know, some of us here. Uh, but most of all, if Jesus had never saved us, uh, our lives would not be open to the relationships that he brings into our lives. And I have a brother who is here, Brother Isaac, and he's from Uganda. And if any of you are geography majors or that was your favorite subject in grade school, we know Uganda is in Eastern Africa. Uganda is the home to Lake Victoria, which is the origin of the Nile River. And if you read your Bibles, the Nile River is very, very uh, popular in the first five books of Moses. And so when God touched the Nile, he touched all of it. And so there were people in deep East Africa who saw the effects of God's power that was there. And so there's history that's there, but most of all, there's love. And I thank the Lord for bringing Pastor Isaac into my life. I met him about five years ago at one of our pastor's conferences, and since then we've just been brothers. And um, it's my deepest honor to let him tell you his story. And I want to welcome him, and I pray that he feels the love that is in this room from this church. We love you. And Pastor Isaac, come on up, dear brother. Um, I appreciate that. I've not had that in many churches here. <laughs> this is the first time I'm, I'm getting it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, I'm glad to be here. First of all, uh, Pastor Anton, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to be here. Uh, I bring this one from our church back in Uganda. Uh, we run a small church. It's House of Love Fellowship. It's a small church with a big heart to the community and uh, they know I'm here today, and I told them I had come to the end of the world. So, <laughs> because they've been asking me, what time is it? I tell them the time, and they're like, for us, we are sleeping. You are awake. And I'm like, yeah, this is the real end. So I may go to heaven from here, but they, they are happy to, to, to know I'm here, and uh, they send you great greetings, and they love you so much. Uh, also greetings from my family, uh, my wife, Penina, she's... Of course, missing me, I've been here now cl close to four weeks, and uh, I'm praying she's, she's strong, and the kids, we love you so much, and they love you, and they are looking forward to seeing you in Uganda someday. Uh, so uh, I'm glad to be, will I raise this a little bit? Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, I have, of course, a few things to share before I go into the word, and uh, perhaps introduce to you my family and just a few things that we are doing back home, and then I'll tell you two good, one good thing about Uganda and one bad thing about Uganda before I share the word. Okay, so that's our family, and uh, my wife there with our kids. Uh, I'll brief them as they come up. Maybe we go down the slide. Uh, that's us, you already know us here, uh, then down. Again, that's us. <laughs> wow, that's our first son. He's Prince. He's 16. Um, 
that's Leah, uh, she's 13. And uh, that's Ransom, Ransom is five. And uh, that's Grace, uh, Grace is seven years old. And that's the last born, that's Rafai, one and a half years old. Yes, he's the, he's the man who is growing up to take care of us when we are having weak bones. <laughs> oh yeah, so uh, we'll just do some more, sli uh, some more short videos there, I'll share. Okay, oh, there was a picture there of my dad, please show that. Yes, that's my dad, he's 90 years old. Wow. Yeah, exactly, uh-huh, the next one. That's my mom, she's 84 years old. Yes, is there another picture? Oh, that's me doing painting work at church. Thank you. <laughs> all right. We can do those slideshow. I mean, all right. sure this work is complete within maybe a week or two. So we can embark on constructing the, the church structure. Uh, why we are beginning this work is because it's vital for us to have this toilet on the site before we can have the church structure uh, put up for the ministry work to start. So we praise the Lord that uh, He's providing for us slowly by slowly to do this work and uh, we look forward to of course more and more uh, provision from the Lord for us to be able to finish this. So we thank, we thank the Lord that today we are able to, we are constructing the septic system and trying to also make sure we make the foundation for the toilet that we are going to be building which will be having both uh, the sites of the, the ladies and the gents. So pray for this work as the Lord allows us to plant this ministry here to help the children, to help the women, to help the men. Uh, this area has a big population, and I feel that it's a time that the Lord has planted this ministry here to redeem the souls in this area, to change the life of the people, and more so to bring about the kingdom of, the, of God in this whole community. So we bless the Lord that you are part praying and standing with us in all ways. God bless you as we do this work. Amen. Amen.
uh, just a brief story about that is uh, how we began way back uh, to, we began our fellowship in the house. We stayed in the house for quite some time. And then uh, some time back, someone had given us money to buy land for our house, our family. But then uh, the Lord put it on our hearts with my wife to offer that to the church. So we offered to the church, and then we had to begin to construct the church in that. That's why you saw it a garden. Then the garden became a church. So we are using that for now, and that's what the Lord has been able to doing that work. So two more videos and we'll be done. Thank you. Somewhere on the shores of Lake Victoria in Uganda is a ministry surrounded by both remote and semi-urban communities. It is House of Love Fellowship, a beloved church where faith thrives through teaching the word and sharing the divine love. We come together as a fellowship in unity to worship, praise and celebrate the grace and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. House of Love Fellowship has a purpose to reach out to as many souls as we can by fronting the divine love of Christ as our main tool. We share the gospel with works of divine love and compassion. As a church, we reach out to all kinds of people especially the needy kids, needy families, single mothers and teenage mothers. Through our weekly kids programs and quarterly youth camps, we are able to groom and redirect the lives of these young souls to Christ as way of building a future church. Today we have over 100 children who turn up every Saturday for discipleship and church activities, and about 60 children turn up for Sunday school every Sunday. Apart from weekly discipleship, all these children need education. Some need a shelter while the entire community needs an affordable health facility. We therefore welcome you to join us today on this mission in Uganda as we reach out to make Christ known and become ambassadors of change through divine love and compassion. Your prayers for us to build an affordable school and a community health facility will be highly appreciated as this will enable us have the needy children in school and get rid of disease at the same time. God bless you all in Jesus' name. House of Love is a ministry of Calvary Road Saints Fellowship. For more information visit our website, www.wholefellowship.org. Lake Victoria, the biggest freshwater lake in Africa is a source of livelihood for many families of the fishermen. Both the shores and the islands are a home to several families living in makeshift shelters that pose a big risk to human life especially the children. The biggest challenge in these densely populated fishing communities is lack of health facilities, high HIV infection rate, poor sanitation and lack of safe drinking water. These conditions also pose a bigger risk to expecting mothers who never give birth in health centers due to distance. The same applies to mothers who live in hard-to-reach areas with poor road network and hilly landscapes. To mitigate these needs, House of Love Fellowship started a reproductive health program where we conduct monthly medical clinics among fishing communities within the islands and along the shores of Lake Victoria. Through these medical clinics, families are given free medical treatment free ARV drugs and counseling, free mosquito nets, routine public health sensitization and immunization for all babies. With much difficulty, we try to ferry expecting mothers from these hard to reach areas to a nearest health center for safe delivery. We believe we can do better with helping hands and prayers from friends around the world. With your support we can buy medicines, hire medical staff, buy medical equipment, string ambulances to transport expecting mothers to hospital for safe delivery. Join us today on this mission in Uganda as we reach out to God's people and become ambassadors of change through divine love and compassion. Your prayers for us will be highly appreciated as this will enable us have helped the vulnerable. God bless you all in Jesus' name. House of Love is a ministry of Calvary Road Saints Fellowship. For more information visit our website www wholefellowship.org Thank you. Alright, that's uh, all about us back home. Uh, 
about the last two videos. Uh, what we do with kids is we gather kids every Saturday. We do what we call the kids club. And through the kids club, we disciple the kids. They, we take them through the Bible. There are lessons that are programmed for them every, every month. And so through that, we gather them from midday to four. We feed them. Uh, of course, some of them, that's the only meal they have when they come to church. And we are able to identify, again, those who are really extremely needy among those who are committed to church. And then we're able to see what we can help with our school and other activities. And so that's the essence of that kids' club. And also through that, we reach out to many parents who are unable to actually come to church. They're able to come because they, they, their children tell them about church. And then for a medical outreach program, this is something that we have been doing for some time because uh, we have islands on Lake Victoria, quite many, about 20 plus, but we can't go to all of them. We just go to a few which are like an hour away from us. And what we do is we set up a medical clinic in the field because these are people who don't have medical centers on those islands, 3,000, 2,000 people. And our government doesn't you know, do much in those communities. So we set up a clinic with an evangelism door. Hear the gospel for 30 minutes. Come and see a doctor. Go, and go to the lab, go to the pharmacy, get medicine, go back home. But then we have a challenge of mothers who are expecting, who can't make it to the mainland to deliver. So most of them have been delivering in their homes, in their gardens. And so our aim is to bring them to medical centers where they can have safe delivery for those babies, also including those in hard to reach areas surrounding us. So we are looking forward to doing two things, especially about our kids program is to put up a school for them and then for the uh, children who are sickly and they were expecting mothers is to put up a health center on the mainland. So when we go with our boats in the islands, we can bring those who are really ill back to the mainland and treat them, then we send them back to the islands. So those are our part of the things we want to do ahead of time as the Lord provides. Amen. All right, the most important thing is to pray, and then secondly, come and visit us, and then do this work. Amen. Yeah, about our church construction, we did everything on the ground. We have our teenagers. We teach them how to make bricks. So everything you saw about our church, we made it ourselves. We made bricks on the ground. We made them ourselves. We mixed sand, and, and we were able to set up all that. So everything that made our church was made by ourselves on the ground. It's a, a great job that the Lord allowed us to do in that area. So we welcome you to do that work and pray for it that the Lord can be able to do much more than that. Amen? Uh, I told you I'll tell you two things about Uganda, one bad one and one good one. Which one do I begin with? The bad one, the good one? The bad one. The bad one is we have had a president who came into power in 1986, and he's still president up to today. So 40 years down the road, He's still the president, and he's still going for maybe some many years. Right, that's the bad thing, right? So the good thing is we don't have winter in Uganda. We have the sun throughout the year, so when you come down there, no winter, you'll have the warm temperature all through. The sun is there all the time uh, from, you know, beginning of the year, the end of the year. So that's the good thing. Hallelujah. <laughs> all right, so I want to encourage us from... Uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 5. Um, our ministries cover Road Saints Fellowship. That's uh, our registered ministry. And then under this, we are doing the Church House of Love Fellowship. Then we are doing the medical reproductive health programs. We are doing the kids programs. And we want to do the school as well. So it's an umbrella ministry, which is the Calvary Road Saints Fellowship. We teach uh, verse by verse and chapter by chapter. We, we are glad to be a Calvary Movement Church that loves the Lord. Um, in this chapter, I want us to look at today is an encouragement from Jesus to the disciples. You know, Jesus is speaking about the Beatitudes, the things that he wants the disciples to be if they are to bring forth the kingdom of God to the people. And Jesus brings out strongly these Beatitudes to them. And I'm picking out verses 13, 14, 15, and 16. And these stand out for me 
about the character of a Christian and understanding who you were as a Christian. And so Jesus writes and says, you are the salt of the earth. He's telling the disciples, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its, its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing, but will be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Verse 14, he says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may, do, they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Father, we thank you for this text, I pray. Lord, as we share, may you just, Lord, speak to our hearts and glorify yourself in this session of worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, friends, this is a very, you know, encouraging statement from Jesus, you know, calling us believers to be the salt and calling us believers to be the light. I always say this is the most important opportunity that Christ gives us. It's the most greatest position that Jesus gives us as believers. Being the salt of the earth and being the light in this earth. As a believer, as a Christian, this is what Christ is telling or identifying you as. He is saying you are. He's actually saying right now, as long as you're a believer, you are the salt. You are the light. He's not saying you will be the light. He's not a promise for the future. It's a current thing. It's a present tense. He's saying you are. So he was encouraging the disciples and telling them, you guys, you are the salt. And so what is salt used for? We all know what salt is used for in our daily lives. We eat food flavored we salt. We, back home in Africa, we use salt as medicine. We use salt as a preservative. We put it in our beef or whatever we have to keep it fresh. And so what does Jesus mean when he says, you are the, the salt? I think he's telling us as Christians that we should be the ones influencing or bring about kingdom influence on this earth. Because nobody else will bring it. If we are the soul, then we change things. We change things from the world way to become the kingdom of Christ's way. And that's the flavor we bring. We influence that. We preserve that which is good. Because salt is a preservative. If the world is decaying, then the world needs salt to stop it from decaying. And that's the fact. We are sold to stop the world from rotting, from decaying. Because the world is full of decay. We all know that. Everywhere, everywhere in the world, there are things that are happening that are not of the kingdom of God. And as a believer, as the salt, you are to change that. You are to stop the decay. Of course, not everyone will change. Not everyone will accept. But we, that should be our intention. It should be our daily life, our daily plan, that we move out as the salt to change those who are going astray to come back to Christ. So we reach out knowing we are the salt. We, are, we have the purpose. We have the responsibility given to us by Christ to change the world from rotting, to stop the world from rotting. And that will only happen if we remain the salt. Because he said, if the salt loses its saltness, then it's good for nothing but to be trampled upon by men under the feet. And then he adds on and says, you are the light, the light of the world. This is another great position that Christ gives us. I look at the sun up there in the sky. It gives light to everybody. That's a great thing. 
And I look at the sun giving this bright light that we see every day. It has great energy that comes out of it. And Christ is saying you are the light. In other words, where there is darkness, we must take out that darkness and bring the light to people. That's why he says you are that light that is set up on the hill that gives light to everybody. I mean, the sun gives light to people. The sun doesn't struggle to come out. The sun doesn't struggle to rise. It just rises anyway. The sun doesn't struggle to set. It just sets. As a Christian, you don't struggle to be a Christian. You must be that Christian and you just give the light to those who are living in darkness. And in fact, we put lights in our houses so we can chase away the darkness. When we enter the house and it's dark in the night, you don't stand at the door and say, you know, light, I mean, darkness, please get out. And darkness goes anyway, it doesn't. What you do, you switch on the light, and what happens to darkness? It just disappears. What does that mean? That if light doesn't play its role, the darkness will occupy the space. The world is throwing dirt. The world keeps throwing a lot of dirt towards us as Christians. They want to cut off the light from us through so many things, through legislation. I know what's happening in this country. We read about so much stuff. We know what's happening in other places in the world, in the Asian world, the Arab world. So much is happening to Christians. So the light can't shine. But that should never take out our light as believers. We must shine brighter because our light, our source of light is Christ. And in fact, if we are anchored in Christ, we shine brighter. And that's why when we say we are the light, then our anchor is held firm in Christ. Without Christ, your light goes out. And so we must come bold with our light up here. People are looking at us as the light. We set an example. Everyone will run to us for answers. And that's what it should be. We must impact the world, not the world to impact us. And that's what Christ is saying. Once you're the light, you keep shining. Even if you cover this bulb without turning it off, you brought a blanket and covered it, it will still shine even when it's covered. That covering will be temporal. Our light must keep shining beyond what people can expect. I always borrow two properties of light that I studied in my grade five. The science teacher who taught us said, light travels in a straight line. I don't know about here, but that's what I learned about science. The light travels in a straight line. That means light doesn't bend. What is Christ trying to mean when he says, be the light? Maybe he's trying to say, let's be straight people. With what we say, with what we do. We just be straight. We mean what we say, and we say what we mean. And I want to encourage us to be that. That we are straight. There's nothing to hide about being a Christian. And there's nothing to fear about being a Christian. You just remain straight. You walk straight, you do things the right way, and you just do them because you are a Christian. The second proverb I learned was, light travels faster than the sound. And the example my teacher gave me was about the thunderstorm. That was a common example. When the thunderstorm during the rain season, we will see the lightning and then the sound comes later. But they tell us the two happen at the same time. But then the other one is fast, and this one comes later. What is our light today as Christians? Our light to the world are our actions. And Christ is simply saying, let your actions speak louder than the words. Because the sound of the gospel is true, and it has been there for a long time. 
We all preach. We all speak about the gospel. Back home, people are in the streets every day. They are with speakers. They are preaching. They are speaking. But maybe that is not doing enough because people are still not getting born again. But then, what about our actions? Could they be speaking louder than the, the words? Because we have sounded the gospel much more. But the world is waiting to see our actions. What are our actions? They speak louder. People don't see God. People in the world see us. Every day, when we wake up walking on the street, people see us. And we are busy telling them about our Christ and our God. But they are saying we don't see that God, but they see us. So, in other words, what we do is what they see. And what we do is what makes them know that, oh, they are with Jesus. Oh, these people, they are with God. I'm reminded of John and Peter in the book of Acts, chapter 4, when they were arrested and, and put in, in jail for making the crippled man walk at the beautiful gate. And then when they are brought out, out in the morning before the Jewish leaders, they interviewed them and interviewed them, and then finally, including the man who, was, who, had, who had been you know, made to walk, were standing with them. But after interviewing them, they say they realized that John and Peter were not educated. That was a negative about them. But the most important thing they recognized, even when they knew they were not educated, they said these guys were with Jesus. That was an identification that was the greatest about them. That they got to realize John and Peter were able to make this man walk because they were with Jesus. The world needs to know that we are with Jesus. We are with God. And how would they tell? By the things we do. Not necessarily just what we say, but the things we do. Verse 16. Let all of us read that louder. I, I always want to hear all of us read that verse louder. Verse 16 of this very text. Let's all of us read. One, two, three, let's go. Read verse 16. Hallelujah. He, Christ is not saying, let the light shine before the trees and the cows. Hallelujah. He's saying, let the light shine before who? Before who? Before all men. Before men. And then they see what? That they may see your good works. And then do what? Glorify your Father who is where? Who is in heaven. And this is it. This is the light the world needs from us. To do good things so they may see those good things and glorify our Father whom they don't see. And believe the Christ they don't see. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, Christ is simply saying, front those things that will make people know that you are with me. And those are the things we are charged to do every day at our workplace, in our families, in, on our walkways, wherever we are. We stick with those things that bring the light to the people, that make people glorify God. Not us, but God. Christ alone. And how do we do those things? Is when we reflect on the works of the Holy Spirit. That it should work in us. That we are filled every day. You know, if I tell someone that God loves you by mouth, they won't understand. And God expects me to love the person. When I tell someone God loves you, it doesn't mean God is going to come from heaven and love the person. It's me to love the person. If I say God gives you peace, it's me to give peace to somebody. What am I trying to say is that as Christians, we must bear the fruit of the Spirit. And those are the good works 
Galatians 5.22, list them down. The fruit of this. It's one. It's one fruit with a number of things. It means you do all of them. You don't do one and leave the other. One fruit. The fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. Those are all things listed for us to do. And when we do these things, the world will see and glorify Christ. Loving the people even when they're not lovable. Yes. Loving the people. Being kind to people. Being patient with people. There are people we call sand paper people. Uh, yesterday I was taken to a restaurant called Sand Piper. Where is that? Somewhere around here. But then I remembered sand paper people. Sand paper people are people who rub against you. They're like sand paper, right? Everyone here, at least you have had someone rub against you, right? Christ is saying be patient with such people. Show your patience. I know the human mind has its own patient style. He say, I'll give you first chance. You do it, I forgive you. Second chance, you do it, I forgive you. Then you say, the third chance, I will not forgive you again. That's the mind. That's the nature of human. They have chances. One, two, three, I'm done. But Christ says, forgive as many times as you can. Seven times, 70 times. 490. But you can even go a thousand times. If you, if you can't. The light has to shine. Being kind. Sometimes you, I know parking lots or slots in, in here when you're going to park to have dinner or you are shopping in a, in a mall and what's the other place we went to? It's called Free. The, the shopping mall here is called what? Free Mayor? Fred Mayor, whatever it is. All right. We went there the other day. So when you're lining up to pay and you know there's a queue, there's some degree of patience you need, right? Someone wants a parking slot, and you, you are like the first, and he's struggling for the same. Maybe you would say, okay, I can be patient. He can take it up. And maybe he would ask you, why did you allow me to take it up, yet you are the first? You say, I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. And I thought you needed more than I do. Because those are the things that bring light to the world. When we love the people, they will ask us questions. Why do you love me even when I do all this wrong? We had a crusade recently back home. We had a crusade in the village, and we had put up a poster talking about what we were going to do. And some people came and put it down because they didn't want the crusade in the village. But later on, they, they took it. We put another one. We had to go and make another one and put it up. They came and took it again. We put it up. And crusade went on. People got born again. At the end of the day, this man had to come and tell us, I am the one who has been doing that. But the fact that you knew who I was, but you never came to me to do anything. We said we knew what, we knew what you were doing, but we forgave you. Because Christ also forgave us. And the man got born again, and he's a Christian. Why? Because we showed him the good way to go. So, the light is our good works. Can we be kind to people? Can we continue with the kindness? Can we continue loving? Can we continue being patient? Can we have self-control? Hey, you know, back in our, in our country, people talk about going wireless, you know? <laughs> when, when, they, when they become angry and do funny things, he will tell you, my, my wires were off. Sometimes I've told Christians, you don't have wires up here. You just have the mind that Christ has given unto you that you must use so you can do the right thing. Of course, these things that Christ talks about, they're not easy. And that's why he says, we, you shall know them by the fruit. Not by the words, but by the fruit. But they're not easy things to do, I know. Every day we try. How shall we do them? We allow the spirit 
to give us wisdom. We embrace the Holy Spirit in us to give us wisdom so that we can be able to do all these things. Because many times we are going to face this in the daily life. As we go about our work, as we go about our business, we are facing all these kinds of situations that require us to be loving people, patient people, kind people, gentle people, humble people. And some of these have good promises. Humble yourself, and it takes you up. It's just the opposite. The way up is down. You go down, he takes you up. It's a requirement from us now. Jesus is not begging us to be the light. As long as we confess Christ, he says you are. Right now, everyone in this room, wherever you stay, in your town, in your house, you are the salt, you are the light in that place. Don't look at someone else. So walk out of here today knowing I am the salt, I am the light. In the morning as you prepare to go to work, you check in a mirror, you say, okay, I am Jane, but I'm the salt and I'm the light. So you go out bearing those in your mind. Once we do those things, then people are going to question. They will see, love it, and ask questions we respond, and they will glorify the Father who is in heaven. Because that's really important. God loves us to do these things. We all want everyone to come to Christ. We all want people to know who our God is. But the trick is not that hard, simple. Being the light and being the salt. Take away the decay from the world. Preserve the Christianity that we have received. Preserve the life in Christ. Light shines to take away the darkness. Be the light. Be the light wherever you are. Be the salt. And don't fear to, to, don't fear to talk about these issues. Endure hardships because some of these things are going to come with hardships. Paul charges Timothy to endure as a, as a soldier of Christ. Endure hardships. So we, there are hardships we are going to endure in the course of doing all this. It's not easy, but there will be moments where you have to endure certain things. Because we are dealing with human beings. We are in the world where people can do, say anything. But that should not take away our saltness. That should not take away our light. Never allow your light to be covered by anyone's basket. You keep it up. We keep it up. And as I end, I just want to remind us that there are good promises when we bear the fruit of the Spirit. It's not just you going to endure and do things or allow the spirit to lead you. You listen. Of course, when you listen to the spirit, always when there is an action contrary to the spirit, there is a voice. There is always a voice. So you either obey it or you say, no, I will not obey that. There is always a voice. Whenever something contrary to the spirit arises as a Christian, listen. There is always a voice that speaks. And that voice is a light. That voice is a salt that you must bring forth. The action. That is right. There are promises. So we must be the salt. We must be the light. Because there is gain in it when we do that. I just want us to take this time to respond to this very message. I don't know what the Lord is speaking to you about this. Perhaps you could have thought about your Christian life. Maybe you are struggling in identifying yourself as a Christian. Maybe you are struggling in, uh, to speak to someone about Christianity. Maybe you, are, you have fears. Let's take this time and, and just reflect on this message. What am I called to be? What does Christ expect of me to be the salt, to be the light? Am I that salt? Am I that light? And how much 
am I doing to be that? Let's take just a minute to do that. Reflect to this. Just pray. Take your time and pray about this right now. As the Lord leads to reflect about these things. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we stand before you this evening. You know our hearts. You know every man and every woman and every child in this room today. You have called all of us. You have filled us with your spirit to do that which you want us to do. You have called us to be the salt. You have called us to be the light. But Father God, there's nothing we can do on our own. We need your spirit to bring forth the light in the world. We need your spirit to be that strong salt. To stop the decay in the world. And Lord, I pray, every, every one of us in this room, Lord, that you'll just give us that grace. You'll give us your spirit to boldly stand as the salt and as the light of the world. The Lord will shine before men, before people of this world, before people of this universe, before men and women, to proclaim your goodness, to proclaim your love, that people may glorify you, Lord. Therefore, we pray, Lord, give us that courage. Guide our ways. Guide our tongue. Guide our actions. Give us that great wisdom by your spirit that we may do that which is right, that which is according to scripture, that which brings light in the world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for this time. And thank you for your word to Lord God that we can share, that you can remind us of our responsibility. I give you the glory. And Lord, we receive the blessing of this message in our spirit. We receive the blessing of being the salt. We receive the blessing of being the light. May this be counted for every woman and every man in this room. That we may do your will. Bring forth your will to glorify you. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Isaac. I pray that you all were blessed by God's word. Um, in the very next chapter, as Jesus is teaching, he would tell the people, don't do your works to be seen by men. So there's three things that people do. They pray, they give, and they fast. 
the Pharisees and the teachers of the law did these things to be seen by men. Our light is not something that gives light to our actions to give us glory, but our light is a light that reflects Christ in all things. And the Holy Spirit has prompted your heart to, to give financially, to give of your time, to give in your prayers, to connect with the House of Love Fellowship, then I pray that you would just listen to the Holy Spirit and be obedient to the Holy Spirit. The church has already always been a church that was full of love and had the ability to uphold the church in other ways. If you read through Paul's letters, that was his goal and his mission the church in Jerusalem needed help, and he went to the churches of Macedonia, and they provided help. In Paul's letter to Philippians, he says, you know, I received help from you because I'm here in jail. And he says, your offerings are a sweet aroma to God. And so from today all the way until next Saturday, whatever is given to uh, our missions will be shared with the House of Love Fellowship in Uganda because the House of Love here in Juneau is real. And so I'm just going to implore you, whatever God has spoken to your heart, just be obedient. And after service, Pastor Isaac will be in the back there. He can provide more information about um, the work that God is doing in Uganda through their church. Also, sponsorship of some of the kids that are there in the church. So be obedient to the Lord and be blessed. Amen. Let's go before the Lord in prayer, and I'll invite the worship team up to sing one more song. Father, we thank you so much for this time together. What a special time. Usually we send missionaries out to other countries, Lord. They learn about different cultures. They learn language. They learn how to communicate to the people of that land. But you also do work in a way where we hear from the people of that land. And we're able to be blessed and encouraged. And that's the way the kingdom is. And so, Father, I lift up uh, Pastor Isaac to you. I lift up his dear wife, his family. House of Love Fellowship, all of the elders and the ones who serve the congregation and the love that's extended through that body to those who face the deepest of needs that for some of us is unimaginable. And I pray, Father, that Calvary Juno, Lord, would be salt and light in this world, not to be seen by men and glorified by men, but to be seen and you be glorified in all that we do. So Jesus, we love you. and We entrust our dear brother to you, that you would take him home to his family and that their fellowship in their church would be so sweet, Lord. So Lord, we thank you for this time together. And we thank you, Lord God, that we were reminded that we are salt and light in this world. So go be salt and light.